Okay, so I now want to go over smoothing groups. Smoothing groups inside of um, 3ds Max are very handy and very powerful because we can have a lot of different smoothing groups, which is great. So, what are smoothing groups? Um, you've probably seen me use the smooth modifier up here. And when I set this to 1, it will set one smoothing group to everything. Now, this modifier, uh, I always tend to use just the modifier. But if I just turn this off to 1, I can also do auto smooth. Without a smooth, basically what it will do is it will automatically smooth. I think it works better here. So if I turn off edges and faces, right now it has hard edges. If you set just a smooth modifier without any settings, it will always be hard edges. So that's great if you want to reset it. Now I press out to smooth and now it will just smooth um, based upon uh, different angles. And it will smooth upon a threshold of 30 degrees. The cool thing about this is that I can click on prevent indirect smoothing. And I can set this threshold lower or higher. And at one point, see, I should be hitting over here this, um, these corners over here. So I believe that it is at, yeah, here it's at 45 degrees where it is hitting this. So like this, you can change different smoothing groups. This is great for, for example, um, fixing problems within your baking. Uh, all the way up to using weighted normals. All the way up to um, just uh, displaying smooth meshes. So that's the thing with like fixing your problems in baking. Let's say that you have a seam within your baking. You do need to know something about baking to understand what I mean. But let's go to face mode. Let's say, okay, so I'm smoothing this and, uh, and I have a seam here. So I need to make this one uh, a different smoothing group. What you can do is you can say like, okay, so everything, if I scroll down here, you can see over here, the polygroup smoothing groups. Because when you create a cube, it will automatically assign smoothing groups based upon uh, the changes that we make. What I tend to do is I always tend to press clear all. Here you can also just turn on auto smooth and then you can see what is happening. So if I press clear all, I can say, okay, everything is smoothing group one, which is uh, often the case for me with baking. Then I can say, okay, I have baking errors around these areas. So these pieces, I need to be able to um, separate them within the, our smoothing groups. If I would select them, I can simply or turn off one or I can just uh, click two and now it has two different smoothing groups. So now I can very simply say, okay, for example here, if I go clear all on just like the selections. So now these are all harsh angles and then over here I have soft angles. And this is basically how the smoothing groups work in 3ds Max. Smoothing groups can be sometimes be a bit of like a complicated topic because they tie in into quite a bit of pieces. So I will not really go over that. But basically, yeah, like with cylinders, it's very easy. If I, for example, have like a very low resolution cylinder, I can simply just turn on my smoothing group and I can or go in here and automatically boost this up until my cylinder is nice and round. Or I can convert this to an edit poly and then I can, of course, if it would be like this, I can just select my faces. And I can set the smoothing to one like that. Um, but I find that often the smooth modifier, as you can see already, it tends to work like a little bit better. See, so it doesn't give me as strong uh, pieces because the, the system calculates exactly which smoothing group it needs. And that was it for smoothing groups.